All right, Finney did not want to believe in the war. Who's got a page reference for an infinitive diagram that they think would help them with this one? Yeah, Mitch, what do you got? 38? 48. Let's go to page 48 in the Warners. Yep, absolutely. Mitch, you want to try it? You can bring your book up. As Mitch is taking a look at it, look, what is the phrase, what is the verbal? To believe. to believe in the war. It's an infinitive, which means it's acting as which parts of speech, possibly? <laughs> Adjective, adverb, or noun. What's it acting as in this sentence? How do you know that? It's a direct object. He wants to know what verb to diagram on the line. Did want and then not is an adverb modifier, so it drops below. Correct. Very good. Now, here's what, put the pen down for a moment, Mitch. What we're going to do is uh, control G, please, Navina. I'm going to move this a little bit over here because you're going to need a lot more space. So let's do this. And then that. Good enough. Nice one little line you're missing. That's a direct object. Oh. It's not in the infinitive structure. Tell Mitch what, what little line that he missed, Melissa. Between what and what? On the horizontal, on the baseline? Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's got to be uh, straight. Upper vertical, not an upper diagonal. Perfect. Thank you. Good job, Mitch. There's your infinitive phrase structure. It looks like a prepositional phrase, except it's popped up above something instead of being popped below. That triangle structure that Mitch has used enables the uh, infinitive phrase to sit above the baseline. Why can't it sit below the baseline? Chris? Below the baseline is reserved for modifiers. That's correct. It's not modifying anything. It's acting as a direct object. So it must be on the baseline, but on the baseline would be all sorts of awkward. So we use that triangle to pop it above. Yeah? Because to believe in the war is the direct object. It's what is being wanted, or in this case, not wanted acting as a noun, and uh, you've diagrammed everything correctly. Believe, you can see, goes on the horizontal. Two goes on the diagonal. And then this is your standard prepositional phrase diagram modifying believe. Believe in what or believe how, believe uh, why. Not so much why, but believe how or believe in what. Everything else is pretty simple to diagram. Thank you, Nabina. That was a good, good example. Uh, does anybody have something different? And by different, I mean either a different infinitive noun, or, or I mean adjective, adverb, or a different verbal. Um, Sarah, what you got? Um, Excellent. I like that. Let me give you a starting. Hold on. Okay, go for it. Taking a look at it, what do you see? Sorry? Yep. What else do you see? 
True. So we've got noun, verb, I am. We have an infinitive to read this book. What about excited? Uh, close, excited is an adjective, so it would be a predicate adjective. It's also a participial. You notice that? So it's a participial predicate adjective. So she actually has two verbals in there, but she only has one verbal phrase. The verbal phrase is to read this book. The other verbal is excited. Who's going to try this? Hmm? Silence descends. Tim! Come on in. Well, we missed you yesterday, Tim, and you know, missed the first few minutes of this class, so we need to see more of you. Go for it. I know. Lives of the successful. I know, not so much planning on space there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you look confused. Do you know how to work a smart board? <laughs> He's thinking, no, I don't, actually. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> Pen down. Pen down. Pen, no. <laughs> okay, that was the most awkward thing that's happened to me all year. Pen down, please. Sorry. Why speak an entire sentence when I can bark commands? All right. Um, con <laughs> control G, please. Thank you. And there we go. Um, I'm going to go over here now. <laughs> Somebody help him out. Okay, to read this book. What's it doing? Ryan. Um, I, you couldn't say, I am, to read this book. That doesn't make much sense. Modifying. Modif modifying excited. If it's modifying excited, Tim, where will it go, basically? What, anything that modifies a word goes where in relation to that word? There you go. You'd be guessing correctly. So why don't you extend your horizontal line a little bit there so we've got a little bit more foundation. Good. And now we're going to uh, think about to read this book being diagrammed as a modifier. All right. um, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not wrong so far. No, you don't. What is this book in relationship to read? It's not modifying read. What information is it giving me about read? Correct. So it's what's receiving the action of the verb. Where do direct objects go in relationship to their verb? Uh-huh. See? You can do it. Perfect. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, I am excited to read this book. To read modifies book or modifies excited, therefore it falls below. You can see that the to and read look very similar to a prepositional phrase. However, this extends almost as if it's a baseline. Remember we talked yesterday about how these are phrases? What do phrases not have? complete subject or, and predicate. They don't have both. These verbal phrases seem to have a lot of what? Which of those do they seem to have a lot of? Yeah, P, the predicate. So look, this looks like a standard predicate structure. Where? You got your verb. You've got your upper vertical. You've got your direct object. You have a modifier off it. It looks like another baseline. It looks like another sentence. So it's going to be a fairly similar structure. 
And when Tim looks at it and becomes a little bit anxious, he's probably becoming anxious because he thinks, wow, this is going to be an entirely new diagram. No, a lot of this is standard diagramming techniques just applied slightly differently. You still have the same relationship between the verb and the direct object. You still have the same modification relationship here, same modification relationship here. So a lot of this is still very much the same. And if you ask yourself the questions, what is excited, okay, links to I through the am. Uh, what is to read this book? It modifies excited. It's telling me how I'm excited. Therefore, it modifies and falls below. Same questions over and over. Uh, good. We've had a couple infinitives. Uh, what do you have? Participial? Okay. Uh, participial, please. And then, Brian, do you have gerund? Awesome. So let's see if we can power through a participial and then a gerund. Then you'll have examples of all three. I like it. Not one, but two. Zoe, find one participial in this for me. Participial phrase. Keep going. That's right. Remember that comma. We'll separate it. Uh, Kelsey, can you find the other one? Uh, close. You have the named correct, but remember the, particip the participial itself will begin the phrase, not end it. named Alice Little. That's your second one. So Melissa's given us a good one with two participial phrases. That means you should start with a basic subject-verb diagram. Go ahead, Melissa. Diagram your own sentence. Not getting a lot of volunteers today. And I don't feel like pushing, so... is what he met, or who he met, whatever you'd like. Perfect so far. So Melissa has diagrammed the basic structure of noun, action, verb, direct object properly. And Young, properly modifying girl. Everything's all wonderful. So it might actually be easier to work the named Alice Little first, since it's shorter. Anybody have a page reference? 33? 43. Yep. Looks good. Slight change here for the participial, but uh, still very similar to basic diagramming methods. Yep. And then what is Alice Little? Therefore. And you can just do the AL if you'd like. Perfect. I want everybody to take a look at what she did. Notice that with the participials, they kind of slide down this slope. Participials are always adjectives, so they always fall below. They slide down this slope and into the standard phrase formation, verb, direct object. She's correct now, working as a photographer. Yes, it is. Perfect. That's it. The as a photographer, 
Uh, Melissa asked, is that a prepositional phrase? Yes, it is a standard prepositional phrase, therefore it attaches. That's why you need this to sort of slide down, because you need a horizontal line to make this attachment right here. All right, uh, let's power through your gerund. Uh, Melissa, if you could pass that over to Ryan, please. These are good examples, by the way. Thank you. Tan creates understanding in the reader. Nakia, where do you think the uh, gerund phrase is? Not creates, because remember, gerunds have to be ing. They would start with an ing. Correct. Understanding in the reader is your gerund. Anybody have a page reference for the diagram? 45. 45 works. 46 works a little bit more precisely. Jordan, you look like you were going to volunteer. Come on up. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Uh, group, please, Control-G. Then we move over there, maybe shrink it a little bit. There, you got a lot more space now. That should help. done. Thank you. So uh, new formation. With the participial, you saw that it kind of slid down on that uh, diagonal leading into the horizontal. Here we have what we might call the stair step. And the stair step uh, is all right angles. We're not angling anything. Um, and then it kind of trips down the stairs. So the verb should start up at the top and then kind of fall down onto the bottom. Why? I don't know. It's the way the architects of RK diagramming decided that they wanted to demonstrate a gerund to distinguish it from a participial. But this is the formation for a gerund. This announces to somebody, oh, I'm dealing with a gerund. Once again, same thing. It winds up in a horizontal line. Perfect for attaching this prepositional phrase that Jordan has attached. It occupies its space over here because it's what's being created. And just like we had that infinitive phrase that was acting as a noun, this gerund is acting as a direct object as well. Mitch? No. Sometimes they're participials. So some participials, it depends upon their function. If they're nouns, they're gerunds. If they're adjectives, they're participials. Yes. I want sentence analysis number eight. You may hand those up. 